be with you. And also with you. Welcome to worship. Well, that was great, whoever that was over here. I love that. <laughs> Boy, uh, thank you. Uh, good to be with you here at Grace Lutheran uh, to gather for uh, worship, and we have baptism. Uh, Charlotte has brought her family with her, Garrett and Taylor, and all the rest, uh, so we're excited for that. The Alleluia Choir is uh, uh, presenting a, 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 a kind of a play almost uh, yeah uh, anyway so that's exciting and uh, but I am sad very sad to announce this is the last day of Sunday school for this year so oh all the kids oh <laughs> yes yeah, so we want to thank all of our teachers that have uh, worked so hard with our kids uh, uh, throughout the year so if you're here with us would you just stand so we can uh, appropriately show our gratitude. So Ashley Sandvin, Kayla Viesman, Mackenzie Lee, Serena Brown, Danielle Wager, Jenny Peterson, Blake Peterson, Leah Prestall, Bethany Wager, Brianna Long, Haley Gritmacher, Lindsay Orada, Amber Tuff, Chelsea Ludvigson. I hope you're standing because I'm going to keep reading. Sarah Hansen, Mandy Johnson, Danielle Stoltzberry, Kelly Tufto, Larissa Stratmone, Brandon and Alyssa Hurley with our music, and then our Christian Ed Board. Mackenzie Lee, Danielle Wager, Kayla Viesman, Leah Prestall, Danielle Stoltzberry, Amber Tuff, Chelsea Ludvigson, and Stacy Larson, and then Chris Laney also with our Alleluia Choir and Handchime Choir. So let's thank them for the work that they've done. And just a reminder for our fourth graders, we have a first communion class starting uh, this Wednesday or right after school, so we hope to see you over here after school gets out. Just walk on over and I'll be waiting for you. All right? Uh, give thanks for our radio services uh, given in memory of Doris and Karen Anderson Spencer, and then bulletins are given in memory of Myrtle and Herman Anderson, uh, this gift from Weldon Anderson, so thank you for that memorial gift. Let's uh, stand and uh, let's turn to the camera so we can welcome those who are joining us by way of our uh, online broadcast and then maybe uh, uh, greet somebody that's around you today. And as you're able, remain standing as we turn to our brief order of confession and forgiveness. The words are printed for you in your bulletins. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then we pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And let us confess uh, our sin in the presence of God and of one another this morning. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Now, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As the called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then you may be seated, and uh, we'll let uh, the Alleluia Choir take over now for their presentation. became frightened and began throwing cargo off the ship to lighten the load. They cried out to their gods, but no help came. Finally, the captain woke Jonah up. He had been sleeping even in the storm. Jonah knew that he had caused the storm by being disobedient to God. So he told the sailors to throw him overboard into the sea and the storm would stop. <laughs> Jonah three days to walk through the city, and as he walked, he cried out, 
In 40 days, Nineveh will be overthrown if the people do not repent from their wicked ways and turn to the one true God. The people of the city heard from the king on down. They all repented from their sin to worship God. And Jonah learned a lesson we should all know. It's foolish to try and run away from God. Instead, it's best to walk with him and he'll do mighty things through us. Thank you, Alleluia Choir. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now let's turn together to the prayer of the day. It's printed for us in our bulletins, and so we pray. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our baptismal song this morning is Born in Cry, hymn number 732 in the back portion of your red hymnals. We invite our kids to come down uh, so that you can sit on the carpet right in front here so you get a, a peek of uh, a close-up uh, Charlotte's uh, baptism. 
Uh, and then uh, the rest of you, I invite you to turn to your uh, red hymnals uh, to page uh, uh, 227, uh, and we'll follow that, uh, that service. So uh, I want to welcome uh, Garrett and, and Taylor, uh, Charlotte's parents, and then uh, Charlotte's uh, sponsors uh, today, Kelly and uh, Kelly Qual and Levi Luce, and then Justin and Emily Nentel. So thank you for your impact on uh, Charlotte's, uh, Charlotte's life as well. So we'll, uh, we'll begin with a word of uh, a baptism that's uh, printed for us in our bulletins again on page 227. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. So living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to uh, the will of God. So uh, Garrett and Taylor, I'll ask you, called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, do you uh, desire to have Charlotte baptized into Christ this morning? If so, then say, we do. We do. And then as you bring Charlotte to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with some responsibilities. To live with Charlotte among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer so that Charlotte may learn to trust God, to proclaim Christ through word and deed, and care for others in the world God made, and then also to work for justice and peace in the world. So do you promise to help Charlotte grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, then say, we do. We do. And then sponsors, uh, do you promise to nurture Charlotte in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit to help Charlotte live in the covenant of baptism and in the communion with the, the church? If so, then say together, we do. we do. And then to all the people gathered here, that includes you kids as well. Are you ready for your question? All right. So people of God, do you promise to support Charlotte and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, then say together, we do. Amen. All right. So I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, say, we renounce them. Yes. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, say, we renounce them. And do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, we renounce them. Yes. And then do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And then let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And then we bow our heads in prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life, in which you took delight. And through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. And at the river your son was baptized by John, and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And by the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection you set us free from the power of sin and death, and you raise us up to live in you. So pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that Charlotte, who is now washed in these waters of baptism, may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Okay. And Charlotte Beverly, you are now baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. There you go. 
Blessed be the God, the source of all life, the word of salvation, the spirit of mercy. You belong to Christ in whom you've been baptized, Charlotte. Alleluia. And let the congregation say together, Alleluia. Alleluia. And then let us pray once again. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give all your daughters and sons new birth, that you cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Charlotte Beverly with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord and the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. And Charlotte Beverly, child of God, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit and you've been marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And if I could take her, and then if you want to make the sign of the cross on her forehead. I want to make the sign of the cross on her forehead as a blessing. Emily, do the same. Levi, make the sign of the cross. Okay. All right, and then I'll invite you to take Charlotte's baptismal candle, and uh, you can light it from the Easter candle or the Paschal candle. And then we have to offer Charlotte a blessing from you. Who would like to make the sign of the cross? Yeah, I know you all... <laughs> I know you all would like to do that. Well, let's, let's just be very gentle. Charlotte is five and a half weeks old, did I remember right? Yeah, five and a half weeks old, so she's very little, okay? So we have got to be very gentle. All right, be very gentle. Yep, okay. You guys are doing a great job making the sign of the cross. Good job. Okay, did everybody get a chance to do it that wanted to do it, William? Did you get a chance? Okay, very good. Everybody got a chance to do it that wanted? Grandparents didn't get a chance to do it, and I bet you they wanted, <laughs> right? So we better bring her over here. And then as we do that, we can... Did you light the candle? All oh, you lit the candle. You're waiting for me. So uh, as they uh, make this blessing, we remember Jesus, who said that he is the light of the world, and then he shared that light with, with all of us. And so we say to Charlotte this day, Charlotte, let your light so shine among others, so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. All right. I'd pass her, but that means I wouldn't be able to hold her. <laughs> okay. And we have uh, some words. I'll bring her around to the congregation, and then we also have some words uh, that we want to give uh, to the parents. Uh, uh, and those are printed for us. Uh, but first, yeah, our baptismal promise to Garrett and Taylor. So let's turn to those words, and we'll say those uh, together. We promise to give Garrett and Taylor our support as they live with their child in the pathway of Christ. We offer ourselves as ones who take Charlotte Beverly into our love, our prayers, and our daily lives, striving to build a community rich in the spirit of God in which to nurture her. Do you want to make this on the cross on her forehead? There we go. And then our baptismal welcome. We'll say that together as a congregation. We welcome you, Charlotte, into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, child of the same Heavenly Father, and a worker with us in the kingdom of God. So we receive uh, Charlotte uh, in our love, and uh, of course always our prayers, and, uh, and as a sign of that, we reach out to her in our applause right now. She seems to enjoy this attention that she's getting. All right. Uh, so uh, we've got some uh, baptismal certificates to give uh, to you. Kids, you can go back to your seats. Thank you. You did such a great job with the sign of the cross on Charlotte. Uh, we've got a blanket from the ladies of the church here, a uh, baptismal medallion, and then a book uh, on baptism for Charlotte that you can read uh, to her. So thank you, and peace be with you. I think I'll just keep her for a while. <laughs> There's her baptismal certificate.
There's your certificate, and then... Uh, yeah, you can blow that out now, yes, yep. Yeah. And I believe Marlis Heath is our lector this, this morning, so thank you. Our lesson today is from Acts chapter 2, 14a, 36 to 41. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus, whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other disciples, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. For those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Please stand for the gospel. And the Holy Gospel this morning is a reading from St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? And they stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? And they replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, And besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early that this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But they did not see Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. And now as they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So we went in to stay with them, and when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and he gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scripture to us? In that same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven, and their companions gathered together. And they were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, if you noticed in the text, we're still in the Easter story, so happy Easter. 
Happy Easter. We're in the third week of Easter. Now, I might not ever get to the high vocational level, that aptitude of St. Peter, as, uh, as he is described this morning in the first lesson. I mean, that's quite a sermon that Peter preached. It wasn't long, relatively short, and at least so what Marlis read for us, just two short verses in our reading this morning. And when he was finished, he sat down, and did you notice the text? The text says, those that welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 people. Now, I don't think that I've ever baptized 3,000 people, but I was curious, so I went back to look. In, uh, in my 26 years here, I've baptized 292 people. But I've given a lot more sermons than just this one sermon that Peter gave. And he baptized 3,000 people at uh, the conclusion of his sermon. Now, we're careful, I think, in the Lutheran Church to have baptisms before the sermon, and I think that's probably in great wisdom, right? Because who knows what can happen after a sermon. Uh, people might leave the church, not be baptized in the church. But it's always great to set your professional aspirations high, but I'll tell you today I'm perfectly content and privileged in baptizing just one, Charlotte Beverly, this, this morning. What a blessing that is. So baptism. What is baptism? And of course, it isn't me, right, that baptize. It's the Holy Spirit that is working and baptizing and building the church. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. We remember that. Now, what is baptism, though? Baptism is uh, a dying and arising, right? Three times, in fact, we pour water over their head, but in some traditions, uh, baptism, you actually go down into the water, and then you're raised up again. So it's a dying and rising, dying to our sin and rising up to new life in, in Christ Jesus. So last week, I talked about it, uh, understanding that really nothing can stop Jesus from showing up no matter where you find yourself, and that's the resurrection life. That's the risen life. No need to lock yourselves in like those first disciples did in the upper room. Remember, they locked themselves in those, those doors. But there's no reason to lock ourselves in. There's no reason for you to lock yourselves in, in your depression or in your loneliness or in your grief or in your sickness or in your disappointment or in your grief or whatever you've gotten yourself locked into. Remember, these things just lock you in. But nothing can keep God out. Jesus walked through those locked doors. But this week, with this encounter with the risen Christ uh, in the gospel lesson, we have some new facets, I think, of living this risen life. Uh, what does it mean to live a resurrection life? And namely, in the gospel lesson, uh, people who live that resurrection life are people who learn to pay attention to Christ's presence, to pay attention to the Christ who is walking alongside them or walking in front of them. So these disciples in today's gospel reading assume that very thing. I mean, they never say it, but it appears by their posture, talking in whispers about the things Jesus has said and about their utter surprise after Jesus breaks the bread that Jesus this Christ would actually be in their presence, that Jesus would actually be walking alongside of them. And it's not until, and I don't know if you caught this, it's not until they get this heartburn that they realize that it is indeed Jesus who walks with them. It is after this heartburn that they recognize this Jesus. After his death, Jesus shows up in the most surprising places, which is not saying much at all because really you don't expect a dead person to show up anywhere again, right? They're dead. You're not expecting them to show up in this reality of life. So I think we are these days a bit short-sighted when it comes to seeing Jesus around us. And I've heard people say that they felt a holy presence or their heart burn maybe at the deathbed of their loved ones or, or maybe at the birth of a child or maybe at the baptism of their child, that their heart burns within them. 
These are the places where heartburn is expected, I think. But what about other unexpected places? So what we learn today is that Jesus is great at setting up all these surprise parties of his presence. Even in the most ordinary ways, when we're just walking together, or when we're talking together, or when we're eating together, we have all of these surprise parties that Jesus sets up for us, where we have heartburn. Of course, we don't call it that. And I truly believe that Jesus is showing up all the time, perhaps even most especially in you for someone else in your life. I truly believe that Jesus is showing up here in so many ways. I mean, I've I've seen it in small ways. I've seen you pick each other's children up from school just to help out a neighbor or a friend. I've seen you reach out to each other after deaths in your family after births in your family, with food, with hugs. I've seen it in big ways. I've seen it even in smaller ways, like how some of you cry during a baptism, or how some of you come to the altar railing for communion and tears begin to roll down your cheeks. I see it in small ways, like our young people who sing or play their hearts out or or use those hand chimes, right? And it's like coming from some celestial beings of pure transcendence as we watch them sing and, and play. And I've seen as the older kids, the junior high kids, as they slap uh, sandwiches together in great joy or throw those sandwiches across the room as they're doing the sub-sandwich fundraiser or sharing in a Gatorade. Their hearts are burning within them. And of course, they don't call it that, but that's what I see. I see it and I've seen it. Your heart is made to burn. Your heart made to burn in the presence of Jesus. So rise to see the risen Christ in front of you. Rise to see the risen Christ all around you. Look back to mark the moments where your heart burned like the disciples' hearts burned in the gospel story for this day, and then live forward expecting it to happen again. It will. Your heart will burn, and it does. Jesus just keeps showing up to make it so, to give us this holy heartburn all the time. And we'll receive our morning's offerings.
O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. And Lord, lead us into your kingdom and teach us to pray together as one family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now just a reminder that our congregational meeting will start right after worship uh, downstairs. Uh, children's Sunday school doesn't start until 10 o'clock, so you're invited downstairs, grab a donut and some juice with us, and then you can head upstairs um, just a little bit before 10. Does that sound all right? Okay, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.